Hey folks, Steve Lundgren here with Nate Streeter, owner of uh, Street Smart. Uh, we're talking about task management today. Uh, what do we got for main points here, Nate? Well, we've got three main points, and this is really just a culmination of things that we've seen over the years and, and ways that we've helped uh, different small businesses and even ourselves. I mean, I think right. we'll show you some of the tools that we use here um, today in our presentation, but everybody has you know, trouble with trying to figure out how to get things done and also how to prioritize and how to get things done when you have a lot of different things and then a whole bunch of people involved. So a whole team of people. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and then also, what do I do about the things that I'm not working on maybe this week, but I don't want to forget about? Right. So we've got personal tasks. We've got team tasks where people are working on projects um, that all relate to each other. And then we've got long-term strategic tasks where I don't want to forget about it, but I'm not working on it right now. <laughs> right. So I think today we'll just kind of share with you guys different things we've recommended to clients, different things that clients have recommended to us. Like some tools? Yep, tools and, and different things that we use to, uh, to help you with these things. Right. And things are really changing over the years. I mean, Oh, the, absolutely. So Gosh. we'll see kind of where... Where things have been and where they're going. Yeah, and I feel like our whole conversation before this, Steve, was about how things are changing with this because, yeah. man, it looks so much different than it did 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. So, well, let's hop into personal tasks. So these are things that um, you're going to get done on your own right? And, for the most part. Cloud and, tools. Man, that sounds like something in the sky. What are we talking <laughs> about? Well, you know, I know that a lot of you, uh, you know, well, virtually all entrepreneurs have a smartphone now and... Uh, you know, there's so many different tools, um, you know, whether it's Evernote or Do, or there's just a huge variety of different ones that you, so many of you guys have told me about and that you use. And it just helps them prioritize what to do next. It helps them, you know, have deadlines. It helps them just do things for themselves. And it can be great because if they're at their desktop, it'll sync with their phone or if they're, you know, it doesn't matter where you are. And that's where the cloud comes in is that doesn't matter where you are, it's oh, the I same see. everywhere. So it's a server-based tool that you can right. use on a computer of right. any kind. Right, yeah. exactly. And, you know, for some of you, you love that. <laughs> I'm actually not a big fan of it. I've tried it. I went cold turkey, you know, uh, uh. for how many months? I think, maybe you don't remember, Steve. I think it was three or six months. Mm. And I went back. <laughs> uh. Uh, I don't like the cloud tools quite as much, but... Um, but for some of you, you love it. And the ability to search, the ability to, to schedule, the ability to sync you know, across multiple uh, devices, it can be great. Right. So check out things like Evernote, uh, Toodledo. There's other popular ones that you can find in the app stores on your smartphones. Mm -hmm. um, and those all are great. Um, but for those of you that are a little more visceral or old school, yeah, old school, here we you go. know, I, I've seen you because I go and meet with you and you all have your legal pads. <laughs> yeah. And... That's really my preference too. I love to just write things down, check things off, markers, you know, all the whole 10 yards. I love that. Um, and I think really for personal tasks, there's a few things that you want to keep in mind regardless of the tool you use. One is you have to have some way to prioritize. Yeah. Because if you don't do that, you'll tend to work on what's easiest first. Yeah. That's not the right way to do it. <laughs> so... Whatever tool you need to use, it needs to help you prioritize. Um, I also recommend do it the night before. So at the end of the day is the right time to fill out you know, your task for the next day. Well, so you don't have to figure out what you're going to do the next day. You've already got to figure it out. Exactly. There's a, and there's some reasons for that. One is you'll be amazed. You know, We should open up a sleep institute, Steve, because this is the one thing. If you're a business owner, this is the thing that's going to help you sleep better at night is you already know that your, your whatever tool you use you has it down. Yeah, all your tasks for the next day. You're not worried about it at all. And you just sleep so well when you have that. So, so you don't have to lay awake at night thinking, did I write that down? Yeah, or am I gonna? what do I got to do tomorrow? What do I do? It's already all figured out. Yeah. So same thing, you're able to relax more in the evenings. I found that so many of my clients who really understand this are able to prioritize, able to do it at the end of the day. Much easier to relax at night when you kind of already know what's going to happen the next day. So right. um, let me show you, you know, this is not something I normally do, but let me show you guys a couple of the tools that I like to use. 
um, that I've developed. So I've kind of moved away from the notepad a little bit. And many of you guys have read the book Getting Things Done. And this is a little bit based on that. So, okay. you know, you, everybody has urgent things that they have. They have important things. And then it kind of goes down from there. You have some things that are important, but not urgent. You have some things that are urgent, but not important. And then you have some things that are not important and not urgent at all. <laughs> and sometimes it's helpful to just organize your day based on that. Right. And so you're always sort of working in the left hand upper corner first, the urgent mm. and important, mm. and then kind of work down into that lower right hand corner, which is the not important and not urgent. Right. And so try to do the urgent and important when you have the most energy. <laughs> That's another thing. So, right. you know, sometimes at the end of the day when I'm completely exhausted, I'll look at those not important, not urgent tasks and say, okay, I don't have any energy for some of the more important things and I'm pretty much done for the day, but maybe I can knock one or two of these little things off. Yeah. So those are the appropriate things too, is you kind of look at this as far as your energy level. Right. So for those who are listening and not looking at this, we should explain that if we didn't already, that, yep. that this is a quadrant. Uh, there are four sections here and the urgent and important is in the upper left. Uh, the urgent but not important is in the upper right. The important but not urgent is lower left. And the not important and not urgent is lower right. Yep. And if you look up getting things done, you know, the, these are the kind of guys that are, you, you know, using these tools. And, um, and then just like any notepad, I've got a section for notes. Mm -hmm. And then at the bottom, today's date. The bottom of the pad. Um, yeah. And so I, because then I can flip back through it and see what I did each day and quickly see, okay, last Wednesday, last whatever. Oh, and it's good to have that at the bottom too. Cause yeah, then you you can flip that if it's if it's attached at the top. Exactly. If you guys want me to help you with this, let me know. This is something that I can help you with. In fact, here, let me show you. Again, though, for those of you listening, I apologize, but this is one that I've been working on for the last week or two, and I apologize. It's so rough, but mm. it's because I haven't had my designers do it yet because I'm still toying around with it. Yeah. Um, but what I realized was for me just having the most important and urgent at the top and not important, not urgent at the bottom. So basically just one list. So you got a narrow column that runs down the left side. Right, exactly. And it's easier to see a, a or sort of a sequence of what's, yeah. Yep, yep, with check marks. That's what those little boxes are on the sides. Oh, ballot boxes, yeah. And then what I noticed is, you guys know, I we have Street Smart projects we're working on every week here, or every day here. And so I was often putting those at the top of my important urgent and what I realized is, well, I have the same, you know, I, I'm putting those at the top every day. Why don't I just put a separate section? Mm -hmm. So you may have things like that in your business too, where it's like, well, you have those, they're always important. Well, maybe you don't want it to mucky up your, your task list that could change from day to day, but you still want it at the top of your notepad every day. Yeah. Um, so something like that, we, you know, you can do. And again, have the date at the very bottom. I love that. Like you said, quick and easy. So right. these are the, some more visceral tools. If you don't want the online, um, you know, the online does give you some f f functions, but man, there's nothing like being able to check it off with a red marker. Yeah. <laughs> it's the tactile sketchbook kind of a thing, yeah. So a lot of you use your inbox, and Steve, you and I talked about this, right. and I've done it, and I'm sure you've probably done it and maybe do it. So you're talking about email inbox. Yeah, as your sort of task management tool. So yeah, because you, you flag them and you can put them at the top and keep them off page two and three where they might get lost. There you, know? you go. Or, you know, and you can send yourself emails. I, I've right, done that right. quite a bit. You know, you've got something you don't want to forget. Um, <laughs> hey, dummy. <laughs> I think most all my clients, when they, you know, as their businesses grow, this tends to be something that they get rid of because it's so hard to manage. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard to prioritize. It's hard to, um, you know, there's just, it gets you get so many emails too from so many different people that it just muddies up everything. And so yeah, you have to manage it. Yeah. yeah I recommend, work. you know, like if this is something you're doing, I'm guessing it probably will frustrate you more than help you. So it's probably better to move to a cloud tool or, or a sophisticated legal pad or something like that. If you get something more complicated. Yeah. yeah. And then some of you are using CRMs, um, your customer relationship management software or a calendaring software right. um, to manage your tasks. Again, depending on the kind of tasks you have, that can be wonderful. Right. Um, you know, if, if virtually all of your tasks are surrounded, your clients, mm -hmm. um, and each client, you know, really client base, a CRM can be great. Oh, um, yeah. absolutely. For most entrepreneurs, though, that really doesn't make sense because they have tons of tasks that aren't related to clients. So 
but you know, f for your sales guy, for instance, that might be great. Oh yeah, fantastic. <laughs> you know, yeah, so you know, it depends on what kind of personal tasks you have. Same thing, I've seen a lot of you use calendaring software, whether it's Google Calendars or something. That works if you don't have that much stuff going on, but once you start having a lot more going on, again, it's like, what, you're gonna put 20 things into your calendar for every day? I mean, that yeah. gets to be a little ridiculous. Um, but if you don't have that much going on, it can work. Right. So I think C and D, it depends on your scenario, but for most entrepreneurs, those things aren't gonna be good tools. Um, a and B cloud tools and maybe a sophisticated legal pad are probably gonna be better yeah, for you your daily you know, task management. Um, yeah. Is there anything else you want to add, Steve, or let's get into... Team? Yeah, we should probably keep going okay. here. So team tasks are just things that... It's not necessarily things you work on together, like in the sense that we're both building this sculpture at the exact same time. It's more of mm -hmm. things that... We might have individual tasks, but we all need to kind of figure out who's going to do it when and who's going to do what. and So it's more of that kind of team task management. Right. You know, we're super excited because Asana keeps getting better and better. I think everybody on our team here just is amazed at how many features they continue to add. So that's another cloud tool, right? I think I have tons of clients that use Asana. Yep, it's a cloud tool, helps you manage. Um, you know, I think they're just doing laps around things like Basecamp and some of the other tools that you guys mm -hmm. have been using in the past. So, man, I it's hard for me to see not if you're if you're thinking about managing multiple people, you know, on a project you know, the, it's hard to imagine a better tool than Asana right now. So it's right. fast moving though, right? I mean, that's right. the thing about service as a software is that they just, you know, who knows, six months from now, there might yeah. be better stuff out there. <laughs> Maybe like by the time this comes out, that'll be out Yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> but we talked about sort of the old school way, right, Steve, which was mm -hmm. you've got a project manager and then you've got all those monotonous meetings to make sure everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing. Yeah, or a lot of times they would have a weekly meeting where you'd, do, you'd update, you know, kind oh, of from, la so yeah. from last week. You know, you've got a, a project list and, you know, where are we at? What are, where are we at to date? And then what are we looking at for this week that needs to get done? And then that's sort of your, you know, touching base with your projects once a week. And then, you know, individual communication in between. Right, right. And I think you and I were kind of joking that project managers, I think in the coming years, mm -hmm. you know, they might maybe used to manage one or two projects Right. And I think with the tools that really we have now, yeah. I think the expectation is they might be managing four or five large projects at a time. This Quite is so much more. easier. Yeah. You know, like in Asana, you can set up series of tasks to do and just drag and drop them in. Like if you do the exact same series of tasks and the same people do it over and over, yeah. I mean, oh my goodness, that really makes things a lot easier for a project manager when they've got tools like that. Absolutely. So, um, but there is something about meetings, and we're going to have a presentation about communication, I think, here in the Come coming up. weeks. Yeah, right. I, we've right. already have been outlining it. And, Good you know, face-to-face, to face, you can share passion, you can share disappointment, you can share excitement a lot differently than you try doing that in Asana. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, as, as much as you might think meetings should go away, now you can still do it over the cloud. You know, you can do a Google Hangout or, or things like join.me or, you know, just or, you know, the more traditional go to meeting. Um, right. So don't think meetings all have to happen in a glass office. Um, right. You know, they can they can happen over the Internet, too. Yeah. Um, and same thing with team tasks. We talked about CRM scheduling software, you know, depending on your team. And if all of your things re are re regard, you know, if your team's tasks are all about customers. Yeah. Um, some CRMs, particularly if they're really focused on your industry, mm -hmm. can really handle your task management for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, I don't know for an entrepreneur, they're likely going to have to have some other kind of personal task management because right. all their stuff doesn't always surround the schedule or the CRM. Right. So, but those are great tools. And I, you know, we, we could talk about CRMs for hours. So, you know, we'll just kind of skip past that because there's so many different yeah. ones. It could be a topic in itself. Oh, yeah. So... But what about those long-term strategic tasks? Um, yeah. Things that I want to do, but not today or this week. So when you say strategic, in what sense? So like I want to, I want to rebuild my website, mm -hmm. right? And but I'm not working on it right now, and my team's not working on it right now. Mm -hmm. So what do I do with that? I mean, it's a task. It's long-term. I maybe have some ideas about it. 
I have some different things I want to put in, but I don't want to work on it right now. And it's more about things that have to do with your company than what your company does. Exactly, yeah. So that in that way, that's why it's strategic. Yeah. So, you know, we love tools like Trello for that. So if you've never checked that out, it's such mm -hmm. a visual um, way to see things. Another cloud tool. Yeah, we love Trello. It works great on mobile phones, uh, uh, things like iPads and Nexus 7s and things like that. Right. I suppose I'm dating this now. <laughs> <laughs> iPads? That was back in the... <laughs> well, so last week. Yeah, exactly. But anyway, um, it works good online and, you know, with mobile tools. Yeah. And um, it's a great way so you can have things. So let's say there's all kinds of ideas you have about your website. I mean, you, you entrepreneurs, you've got a th million things going through your minds on every little thing. Mm -hmm. It's so freeing to have a place where when you have a new idea for your website, you go and drop that idea in. And Trello can be great for that. You can attach things, you can attach links, you can write comments, you can, there's all kinds of different ways to, to utilize it. Um, and then you feel so much better because you didn't forget about it. Yeah. But yet, it's not something you're specifically working on today or that your team is specifically working on today. Yeah. So if you don't have a long-term strategic task management tool, Get something, man. Put a whiteboard up in your office. Yeah, I mean, whiteboard. you know, that was another thing we talked about. Nice is, segue. <laughs> yeah. Um, get something so that you can, and or your team members too. Yeah. Because nothing's more frustrated when you have an idea and then because we're not working on it now, people get discouraged. And then they think, well, I'm not going to bring any new ideas. They never do anything about them. Yeah. Just trust me. Have them write it on a board and they are empowered immediately. <laughs> I mean, it's just amazing. Yeah. Um, and it shows that you as the boss care about what everybody thinks. And Important so, enough to put it up there where everyone can see it. Yeah, if you're cloud-oriented, go for something like Trello. I, I can't imagine. A, there's other ones out there, but I like that one the best. And for the most part, it's free too, which is great. So. Yeah. Well, that's been good. Yeah. So what's next? Um, we have a couple of things. Uh, what you can do to help us. Uh, if you thought this was helpful uh, or you liked it, you could uh, leave us a Google review or a comment. Uh, you could share this video with someone else you know that you think could use it. Uh, you could also suggest a video topic. Let us know the things that you'd like to talk about. Um, what we can do to help you. Um, uh, do you want to talk about these, Nate, or should yeah. I? Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of times people don't know exactly about our strategy model. And our model really is about weekly coaching and strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, but we also help people do a lot of things. You know, So we're very hands-on. Right. Um, with their marketing and with their business. So um, it's important to understand our strategy model that way. So we're not really a traditional business coach in the sense that, you know, we talk for an hour a week and that's basically it. We're a, a lot more hands on as far as helping you track things, helping you build systems, helping you do all kinds of stuff. So we marry the two, yeah. Yeah, but the best thing to do is fill out, we've got a free company evaluation and there'll be a link below um, where you can click on it. And it, you know, it does take a little bit of time, maybe like 10, 15 minutes to do it. Mm -hmm. um, it's mostly multiple choice and stuff though, so don't worry, it's not like you're taking the SATs. <laughs> <laughs> but it will help us understand whether or not we're a good fit for you. And we'll give you that, that free company evaluation, help you kind of understand. A lot of the focus we do is on marketing. And so um, a lot of the questions will be related to that, but it'll give you an idea of whether we're a good fit for you and, and also kind of where you're at with everything. Yeah, they'll, they'll gain either way and they'll, they'll gain some understanding about their company. Right, right. You know, a lot of what we do is help you be, build a business that you're proud of. And this evaluation will really kind of help you understand how proud you are of your business and where you kind of view where you're at with hiring and marketing and different things. Yeah. And so it's a cool thing. Take it. If you're interested in taking the next step with us, it's really the first step. So um, take the evaluation and we can go from there. Great. We'll talk to you next time.